I'm so proud. Oh. <laughs> when I was a puppy, I entertained you with my antics and I made you laugh. You called me your child and despite a couple of chewed up shoes and a couple murdered throw pillows, I became your best friend. Whenever I was bad, you'd shake your finger at me and ask, how could you? But then you'd relent and roll me over for a belly rub. I am not so different in my history of abandonment as anyone else after all. We all split away from the earth, each other, and ourselves. Author Susan Griffin perfectly captures our urgency to belong and our desperate fear of being cast off by those we care about. The utter despair of abandonment by any definition icily grips our souls and ingrains itself in our minds. We dare not wake this beast. Our longing to belong for friendship for unconditional love guides us on each steps of our journeys. When we find this love, we cling to it, desperate to keep it. But not all love is a forever love. Now we take a look at love, family, and loyalty from a member of our family we may take for granted in How Could You by Jim Lewis. My house training took a little longer than expected because you were terribly busy. But we worked on that together. I remember those nights of nuzzling you in bed and listening to your confidences and secret dreams. And I believed that life could not be any more perfect. We went for long walks, runs in the park, stops for ice cream. Even though you said I only got the cone because ice cream was bad for dogs. And then I'd nap in the sun as I waited for you to return home at the end of the day. Gradually, you began to spend more time at work and searching for your human mate. I waited for you patiently, never chided you about bad decisions, and romped with glee at your homecomings and when you fell in love. She, now your wife, is not a dog person. I remember the first day she moved in. She said she wasn't a dog person due to the fact she already had two cats. Well, I'd never met a cat, so I treated it as if I would any other dog. I went in for a good sniff and then they ran away as if I bit them on the hindquarters. She didn't take too kindly to me hurting her beloved pets, but I welcomed her into our home anyway, showed her affection, and I even obeyed her. I was happy, because you were happy. Then the human babies came along and I enjoyed in your excitement. I was fascinated by their pinkness, how they smelled, and I wanted to mother them too. Only, she and you worried I might hurt them. So I spent most of my time banished to another room or to a dog crate. Oh, how I wanted to love them. But I became a prisoner of love. As they began to grow, I became their friend. They clung to my fur and pulled themselves up on wobbly legs. They poked fingers in my eyes, investigated my ears, and even gave me kisses on my nose. I loved everything about them, especially their touch. Because your touch had grown so infrequent, and I would have defended them with my life if need be. At night, I'd sneak into their beds and listen to their confidences and secret dreams. I'd snuggle up close when they had nightmares and lick their faces in the morning to wake them up for school. No need for that annoying buzzing thing that's always going off at eight in the morning. There had been a time when others asked you if you had a dog and you'd produce a photo of me from your wallet and tell them stories about me. These past few years, you just answered yes and changed the subject. I had gone from being your dog to just a dog. And you resented every expenditure on my part. I was ex now you have a new career opportunity in another city and you and they will be going to an apartment that doesn't allow dogs. You made the right decision for your family, but there was a time when I was your only family. I was excited about the car ride until we arrived at the animal shelter. 
It smelled of dogs and cats and of fear and of hopelessness. He filled out the paperwork and said, I know you'll find a good home for her. They shrugged and gave you a pained look. They understood the realities facing a middle-aged dog in a shelter, even one with papers. You had to pry your son's fingers loose from my collar as he screamed, please, daddy, don't let them take my dog. And I worried for him and what lessons you had just taught him about love and loyalty, about respect and responsibility and respect for all life. He gave me a goodbye pat on my head, avoided my eyes, and politely refused to take my collar and leash with you. You had a deadline to meet. And now, I have one too. The nice ladies at the shelter said you probably knew about your upcoming move months ago, but made no attempt to find me a better home. They shook their heads and asked, how could you? They are attentive to us here at the shelter as their busy schedules allow. They feed us, of course, but I lost my appetite days ago. At first, whenever someone passed my pen, I'd rush to the front hoping it was you hoping that this was all a bad dream, that maybe you changed your mind, or that someone had come for me. Someone who cared about me. Someone who could save me from this horrible, horrible place. When I realized I couldn't compete with the frolicking for attention of puppies. Puppies oblivious to their own fate. I retreated to a far corner, and I waited. I heard her footsteps as she came for me at the end of the day. I padded along the aisle next to her to a separate room, a blissfully quiet room. She placed me on the table, rubbed my ears, and told me not to worry. My heart pounded in anticipation of what was to come, but there was also a sense of relief. The prisoner of love had finally run out of dates. As in my nature, I was more concerned about her. The burden which she bears weighs heavily on her. And I know that, the same way I used to know your every mood. She gently placed a tourniquet around my foreleg as a tear ran down her cheek. I licked her hand in the same way I used to comfort you so many years ago. She expertly slid the hypodermic needle into my vein. And as I felt the sting and the cool of the liquid coursing through my body, I lay down sleepily, looked into her kind eyes, and I murmured, How could you? Perhaps because she understood my dog speak, she said, I am so sorry. She hugged me and hurriedly explained it was her job to make sure I went to a better place. A place where I wouldn't be ignored, or abused, or abandoned or have to fend for myself. A place of love and light so very different from this earthly place I've come to know. With a thump of my tail, I tried to convey to her that my how could you was not meant for her. It was meant for you, my beloved master that I was thinking of. I waited for you and I thought of you forever. I decided it was time to make my last wish. I wish you'd find the same love and loyalty that I showed you for so many years before. And with that last wish, my heartbeat began to slow. My breathing grew shallow. I thumped my tail one last time as my eyes slid shut.